In the Black, Out Loud. Coach to success. If you are a manager wanting your team to kick more goals, it may be time to put on your coach's hat. Coaching requires a different skill set to traditional management, but there are certain rules that can help you put coaching into action. By Emma Foster. This article has been edited for audio purposes. Article begins. It is hard to find a manager who is not busy juggling projects, meetings, and a stream of pressing problems. This leaves them with little time to develop the skills of their team. Yet, according to workplace experts, it is the managers who coach their teams, rather than simply manage them, whose lives are made much easier. Being a good coach and manager can remove a lot of this stress, says Guy Hargreaves, principal at HR and coaching consultancy, The Workplace Coach. That's because your team will be more engaged, they'll be happier in their roles, morale will be higher, absenteeism will be lower, and you'll have fewer conduct issues. It can be a big time saver. The terms managing and coaching are often used interchangeably, but the approaches are distinct. Managing is about organising people and processes to deliver work on time and on budget, while coaching focuses on getting the best out of people by helping them improve their own effectiveness. When we're using coaching skills, we're asking questions and guiding rather than telling, explains Professor Grace McCarthy, Dean of Business at the University of Wollongong. We're listening to people, helping them to solve their own problems, to set their own goals and giving them feedback in a respectful way. That leads to positive action in the future. Hargreaves believes that while some situations may require a more direct management approach, managers should never take off their coaching hats. Every interaction you have with someone in your team is an opportunity to either build that relationship or damage it. Every interaction you have with someone in your team is an opportunity to either build that relationship or damage it, he says. Going into those conversations, you should always be asking, what am I trying to achieve? How can I make sure it's a positive experience and that the person will be more engaged, not less? Coaching is not a skill that comes naturally to all managers, but the experts agree that following a few simple rules can help managers put coaching into action. Number one. Listen keenly. The top skill for a good coach is the art of listening and not being tempted to rush into problem-solving mode, McCarthy says. If someone has a problem and the manager always says they've seen it before and solves it for them, that doesn't help the person grow in their own thinking capacity, she says. If the manager asks to hear more, very often, by the time the person has talked it out, they'll say, oh, I know what to do now, simply paying attention and listening can help the person get clearer in their thinking, so the solution becomes obvious. Number two, mind your words. Hargreaves adds that coaches cannot be lazy with their language. Rather than saying, why did you do that, which could feel accusatory and put the person on the defensive, you could say, take me through your thinking. How did you get to that point? It's a very different feel, he says. It's really about getting better at communicating and being mindful of how what you say sits with the other person. Number three, let go of positional power. As there is an implicit power imbalance between a manager and their team members, a good coach will remove the inequity by nurturing a sense of being in the trenches together, Hargreaves says. They will also be comfortable with stepping away from the credit limelight. For some managers, it is hard to let go of being the star of the show, But if you take a servant leadership approach, it allows your team to shine, which also reflects well on you. Number four, lean into hard conversations. Most managers avoid difficult conversations for fear of negative emotional reactions. Yet, addressing shortcomings is as important as acknowledging strengths, Hargreaves says. Whether it's about performance, values, attendance or behaviours, his advice is to go into those conversations with a coaching mindset and with an intent of helping the person grow professionally. That's the secret sauce, to have the courage to say the things that other people won't say and to turn those challenging interactions into positive experiences. Number five, reflect regularly. McCarthy says a good coach will also set aside time to reflect on their conversations. Reflection is how we learn and grow ourselves, she says. Without reflection, we can lose track of the important insights we've had. 
When you look back, you may ask, is there any pattern I'm seeing here? Or why did that conversation go well, but not this one? Being self-reflective is key to becoming a better coach. Number six, check with AI. McCarthy also suggests leaning on generative artificial intelligence programs to help with coaching conversations. More specific prompts give a better result, but take care not to divulge confidential information. For example, you could ask for general suggestions on how to get better at listening, or be more specific like, I am a finance manager who'd like to coach an underperforming employee. What questions can I ask during a difficult conversation? It's like a little pocket reminder to help stretch our skills. In the Black, Out Loud.